Today I'm going to walk you through all the steps needed to run a full casting simulation on SolidCast 8. First we'll start in our CAD software with models of our part, in this case a simplified Thor's hammer, and our gating system, in this case a simplified two gate uh, gating system. And we'll create an assembly to verify that the part and gating line up as we want. Depending on how you design your gating system, whether it is built directly onto the part, or if it is a separate part that has an interference, like on this one with those little triangle sections, uh, you may need to save it as two separate STLs and realign them in the SolidCast software. In this particular case, if you saved these two parts as one single STL file and tried to simulate it, those triangular voids would not fill in the simulation. So here is SolidCast opened. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to File and then New Model. This is where we can name our project for uh, how it's going to be saved. In this case, I'm going to name it um, SolidCast EX Thor's Hammer. This will create a folder that'll uh, hold all of your files for the project, all the simulations and everything. Hit OK. And now you can see that we have model one in our tree. This is where all of our models, meshes, and simulations will show up. We'll go to edit, add shape. We're gonna make sure that we have an STL uh, selected as the shape type. Uh, we're gonna use uh, millimeters in this case, and then leave priority as five for casting material. I'll cover that in a bit. Uh, and leave the casting material as, uh, as casting material. And we're going to pick our part STL file and we're going to hit add shape, which puts it in the environment. And we'll close the add shape tool uh, and zoom into the part and then rotate it around so that you can see it in the world. Now, jumping to a few of our principal views, uh, you can see that it's not aligned how we had it in our CAD software. So we'll need to rotate it in order to get it aligned the way that we want. So very first step, uh, we are going to um, we're going to hit the selection tool, the shape, select shape mode, and then select the hammer. Then we'll go to edit, rotate selected shape, and in this case we want to rotate 90 degrees about X and Y. And we're gonna hit okay. There, that rotated the hammer. We're gonna zoom back so that you can see that it's in the proper orientation. And we'll check in our uh, uh, principal planes, uh, principal views as well. Uh, next, we'll add our gating system. So here we're going to change the priority. So this is uh, if there are overlaps, which is the primary material in which will get uh, uh, taken away. Then we're going to select our material is riser material. And then we'll hit add shape and then you can select your STL file for the gating system. I'll hit open. Close out of that tool. Uh, so there you can see in the world we've got uh, both the hammer and the gating system, uh, which are not lined up yet. Uh, so we'll pick the selection tool again, uh, select the gating system, and then go into rotate object. Uh, now we only need to rotate around the X, so rotate 90 degrees around the X. Uh, there we go, now we've got the two lined up the way that we want. And the next step is just gonna be move, moving them into place. To do this, we're going to go to edit and then uh, move selected shape. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure all these are set to zero. I've had a lot of issues with uh, it not being zero, even though it's set to zero. Uh, then we're going to go to add uh, or use pick points. So this you pick two points. So here I'm going to select one point on the bottom there. And then I'm going to rotate the model and then pick another point on the part 
and then it'll move the gating system to that second point. So they're uh, rotating around. It's uh, pretty close to how I want it, but it's just ever so slightly off. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, actually type in a few values just to, to step it over a little bit. Uh, here you can see it's a little bit off-centered. I'd, I'd like that a little bit closer. Um, so I'm going to uh, take away 0.1 inch. Oh, wrong way. Okay, uh, let's do that again uh, and uh, maybe double it in the other direction. So edit move shape, then we'll go to positive um, positive 0.2. Hit OK, and that looks a lot more centered to me. Doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, uh, enough to get it to where uh, it'll work effectively. So we'll save the project here. Um, just in case anything happens, we can jump back to this point. We're going to add shape. This will be our uh, fill material, so where the, the simulation knows where, that way the simulation knows where to pour the material in when it's doing the, the casting. So I'm going to uh, change my priority again um, to 6, then set my material as, as uh, fill material. Oh, sorry, priority set to 5. Material is fill material. Um, and then we're going to change the shape type from STL file to solid cylinder Z. And then set it to be a reasonable size for uh, the gating system. Uh, in this case, radius of 0.5 inches and a length of 0.5 inches. Then we're just going to click where we want it to show up and then click add shape. And there you go. Now we've successfully uh, imported all of the parts that are needed to run the simulation. So we'll just hit save again, that way we don't lose any of this hard work that we've done so far. The next thing we're going to do is set up the properties for the mesh, which is what the simulation uses to calculate the metal flow. So first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go up to uh, model and then material list. Then we're going to select our material from the database. And here I'm going to select the material that we used for the Thor's Hammer project, which is a 17.4 steel. There you go, 17.4. And then we're going to hit use this casting material. And replace is OK. So now you can see our settings for uh, the 17.4 steel. Uh, you can see the cooling curve here, uh, and now you can see our mold materials. So in this, we're not gonna use silica sand, we're gonna be using investment casting. So we're gonna go uh, from database, and then here on the left, we are going to select an investment shell, and we're gonna set uh, or we're going to check these settings for um, what the temperature and other conditions for that investment shell are going to be. So now we can select the investment shell as our uh, mold material. And look at the other settings that the simulation is going to be using in its calculations as well. Here you can see the ambient temperature and the pour time as settings. Um, in this case, I'm going to leave it at uh, three seconds uh, and an ambient temperature of about 70 degrees. Hmm. Let's stick with three seconds. Close out of that. And then we'll go back up to model and then create mesh. And here we're going to name our mesh. Uh, so here I'm going to call it mesh uh, 1 million because we're going to use uh, 1 million nodes on uh, this simulation. 
So here we're gonna select number of nodes. I'm gonna change it to uh, 1 million. We're gonna use our uh, investment shell mold material and mold open top, that way it knows uh, that there's gonna be a, a pore opening on the top of the shell and set the mold thickness. And now you can see the uh, software is calculating what that mesh looks like. It's uh, uh, a voxel shape uh, where it calculates all of those areas. Uh, and then here you can see it building that shell around uh, our, our models. So now on the left tree, you can see our mesh 1 million. And let's create another mesh so that way I can demonstrate what it looks like at different sizes. So here let's do um, mesh uh, 100,000. And then we'll just take a zero off of uh, the number of nodes. So that that's 100,000. And you can see this one runs a lot faster because it has so many fewer nodes. So now on the tree, you can see that we have two meshes for one model. Uh, you can have multiple meshes for one model and multiple simulations for each mesh. Our next big step is gonna be creating the simulation for the mesh. So we're gonna select our mesh 1 million and go to mesh and start simulation. So here, uh, let's just name it uh, Simulation A, um, just to differentiate if we were to do another simulation later. Uh, we're going to do a, a, a solid cast full. There are other options that you can do, but I run the full simulation every time. And then um, we'll, we'll leave it at the, the default, the stop one, 100% uh, solid casting and riser. And then... Uh, let's select run view factor before simulating. So it'll do one extra step, uh, but we'll hopefully get more accurate results. I'll hit run. You can see it's, it's doing that um, factor calculation before it does the simulation. And here's what the window looks like for the simulation. And it's off. This may take quite a lot of time to simulate as you can see um, we're not nearly running in, in real time here. We're at uh, 0.15 seconds out of uh, three seconds that it'll take, uh, um, that it's simulating that it'll take to cast. But you can rotate around. Uh, if you need to, you can stop it with that little stop sign up there and then resume with the fast forward looking button uh, and then give it a second and it'll get started back up on the simulation. There are different views that you can do uh, it, while the simulation is running. You can view, uh, currently we're looking at the current metal temperature, but you can switch to uh, say the Z velocity and you can see the stream down is quite fast or just overall velocity and see uh, what areas are moving the fastest. Um, you can change it to pressure and you can see at the bottom we're getting a little bit of pressure buildup. Yeah, right down there where the, the metal is hitting at the base of our gating system. Uh, fill temperature I find is interesting. This is the temperature where each of the mesh nodes is filled is at, so that initial temperature and let's just bring it back to normal temperature. So I'll let this run and we'll join back up when it gets to that second gate at the top. We've reached the second gate and you can see that material is just now coming over that edge. Uh, this is the part of the simulation where you would most likely see the inconsistencies with um, saving your two parts, your part and your gating as one unified STL and importing it to SolidCast as one STL part, uh, where those voids may cause an inconsistency in the material flow uh, where SolidCast doesn't know how to handle uh, an internal void like that. Let's jump ahead again to where it's a little bit more full, that way we can look at the display views one more time. 
so that some of those different uh, views are more apparent uh, now that the mold is more full. Here you can see a rather dramatic difference between the temperature and the fill temperature. You can see it's a lot hot, hotter uh, at those points when it fills and then as it cools over time, uh, here we'll jump back, you can see uh, what a difference that looks like. Now that the mold is 100% filled, this window will close and it'll open the solidification simulation portion. Uh, I'll skip ahead here to where it is closer to completion. So now we are at 88, uh, almost 90% solid. Uh, this portion of the simulation is calculating uh, the time that it takes uh, for each of those individual nodes to solidify um, from molten. Now that all of the nodes are uh, full of molten metal, it needs to calculate how long it takes for those to solidify. So once this is complete, the window will close itself and the simulation is done. Now that we've run the simulation, we want to view our results. So first we'll click our simulation, then tools and simulation results viewer. It'll open a new window and then we'll select the simulation that we just ran. It'll prepare the data. Uh, first thing that we're going to want to look at is our material density. So we can either plot it, it as a whole or cutting planes to look inside the part. Uh, first, let's just do a plot of what it looks like now uh, on the outside. Then we'll go back to cutting plane and then select the plane that uh, uh, cuts through the part down the middle. And then we'll hit cut plot cutting plane and then click the background and go into our principal view where we can see the good cross section there. And you can see here that uh, density is 2.17%, uh, 2% in some areas. So there's a big porosity issue uh, right in those hot spots there. Uh, you can see the, the uh, key on the right uh, showing that gradient of what uh, it should look like. With our cutting planes, we can move them around uh, so here, let's take the slider and push it to the side, and then it'll pull us further away from the center. Here we can get uh, a, a three-dimensional look at what those porosity zones look like. So here you can see that top one has disappeared at this point, but the bottom one is still there. But as we go further over, they both disappear towards the edge. Uh, if we bring it back to the middle, though, you can see that hot spot again. Uh, we can change to other... Uh, other criteria that we'd like it to show. So here is solidification time. Uh, you can see in this one, it's actually a pretty good uh, gradient going from uh, thin to thick. However, it would be nicer if those um, yellow spots were a bit more into the gate rather than in the part itself. Now that we have interpreted the results of our mesh 1 million simulation, Let's run a simulation on our mesh 100,000. So we'll keep the settings the same for the simulation. We'll do the same flow cast full uh, and make sure to select the run view factor before simulation. Here you can see it simulates much faster than the mesh 1 million due to the smaller number of nodes that it has to calculate the interactions between. So it's not quite running at real, real time, but it is running quite quickly. And um, this will carry over to the uh, solidification um, calculations as well. That'll run a lot faster with fewer nodes. The concern with the different node sizes um, is that with a coarser um, number of nodes, then the results of your simulation might not be as um, theoretically as accurate or as uh, precise as it would be on a coarser simulation. But if you need to do initial testing or uh, quick testing, then this is certainly a good way to go. So here we're nearly complete. And 
the solidification is extremely fast. And there we go. Now it's all the way complete. So we can select our simulation and go to results viewer and then click our mesh 100,000 simulation and then go into our uh, or click our uh, material density and our go to our uh, or first do our, our outside simulation and then we'll do our cutting plane and take a look at that as you can see here it looks very similar to the results that we were getting on the other simulation when you put the two uh, simulation results side by side you can see that while they are different certainly um, they show the same hot spots they show the same uh, areas that you would need to fix uh, particularly in a case like this where it's a pretty big issue uh, of porosity in those two areas. Um, additionally, you can see on the coarser one that it is more grainy uh, and that it, it doesn't show quite the same natural looking shape as the one million mesh. To save the simulation videos, we're gonna select our mesh, go to mesh at the top and then start flowcast. Then we'll use temperature data from a previous simulation and make sure that's the the one that we want to save off. Then it'll pull up a similar uh, interface to um, when, when the simulation was running and we can move it around where we want and select the display data that we want. Um, in this case, I think that I'm going to leave it at um, the original uh, uh, current temperature. That one. Then we'll go over to animation tab on the right and then select our uh, format and then hit create animation file. And then um, this will open the folder that it created for that project. You can see the SolidCast EX Thor's Hammer folder uh, in the tree up at the top. And then we'll just name it to whatever we want for this one. simulation 1 million in this case. Then we'll just hit save. And it'll run through the simulation one more time, but it doesn't have to do the calculation, so it's just showing what the flow looks like. And now that video is saved off. So you can move it into um, any view that you want. I'm gonna pick a few, uh, um, pick an ISO view and then a few principal plane uh, animation uh, videos and then it'll just save it all to that same folder. So here um, I'm just gonna rename it so that it has uh, ISO and hit save. And I'll just do this for a couple of the other principal views. These simulation videos can be useful in identifying and conveying issues that you find with the metal flow, uh, particularly if there's turbulence or if um, you see that uh, certain areas are, are completely solid by the time that the top casts uh, in one case or um, the pressure on the mold if that ends up being too high since that's one of the display data uh, criteria that you can select. Um, Plus they just look cool. So here, this simulation that I'm saving off will be my last one. This is the front view. And then I'll show uh, those uh, last three uh, principal views that I saved off. Lastly, when you close the software, make sure to save your project. Thank you for watching and good luck.